Hello everyone, this is Ritesh from Dancing with Data. Welcome everyone to my YouTube channel. So I am Ritesh, two times Tableau ambassador and one time Power BI super user. And today we are here to discuss about Power BI Data Analyst Associate Examination that is PL300. In other words, PL300. So let me give you my background. Uh, so I was uh, two times a Tableau ambassador. So I have spent a quite a lot of time with Tableau community. And then I thought, you know, why not to uh, learn the other giant Power BI and see, you know, how it is similar or different with respect to Tableau. And as an instructor, you need to certify yourself. Also, I get engaged in one Power BI uh, project that was related to, to learning and development. And that is my department, learning and development. So I worked on one project as well. So you can say around six months back, I started uh, learning. Power BI. So from where to start? Now Power BI is having a comprehensive course or say learning path for PL300. So I think this should be the starting point and you will ask anyone who has cleared this certification. He will tell you or she will tell you that they start from this place. So I'll ensure that all the links that I'm talking about should be there at the YouTube description. So kindly check those links from the YouTube description. So this will be your first link to share with you today. So in nutshell, a Power BI data analyst provides meaningful business value through easy to comprehend data visualizations, enables others to perform self-service analytics and deploys and configures solutions for consumption. Candidates for the exam should be proficient using Power Query and writing expression by using DAX. Data analysis expression. Here you can see the passing score, which will be 700. So remember, this is not like a level one certification. It, 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 it's a level two certification so it's it's not that easy and it's not that tough as well just set your strategy and ensure that you are moving in the right direction so maybe I'll, I'll try to help you out on that also the validity for this exam would be for one year so it's not like lifetime validity so you are expected to have some good hands-on experience with the power bi desktop and power bi service both okay so once you have decided that okay you are going to give the examination first of all come to this pl300 study guide this very particular document will take you to the different uh, uh, links over there. As you can see, your certification journey, certification renewal, what is the passing score. So you get all the major information about your examination, the passing score, what to expect on the exam. So let's start with the course outline. So you can see what are the skills measured over there. Prepare the data, model the data, visualize and analyze the data, deploy and maintain assets. PA100, they were so we see there are four sections over there and DA100 had five sections. So two sections have been merged. And that's the major difference with respect to the previous version. So this site is having a very good learning path. So you will have to go with this only. So they say that there, there are two ways to prepare. So one is online free, one is instructor let paid. So we are talking about the free one, right? So items in this collection. So you will see that all the sections have been covered and for each section, there are different modules over there, right? Uh, the best part that I really like is that each module you will see, you, you are even having labs over there, right? So that means you have a remote machine where you can access, you can make use of it to complete the exercises in this, in, in, in every unit over there. You will not be charged. <laughs> nice. So you have to simply click, log into your lab and complete your exercises. That is the best way to learn after every module of these sections over there. Not only that, within every module you will see, uh, for example, if I open this very particular module, the second one, which is, or maybe this one, get data into Power BI. So you will see there is one check your knowledge as well, where you can see a few multiple choice questions over there or say single choice questions and these questions like some of the questions will be like that not all I'll tell you about the types of questions that you should expect okay but yeah this can be expected as well over there so this will be a starting point that is the microsoft learning path complete all these sections all the modules complete your labs your knowledge but what after that now this is the time to analyze how much you have learned and you can analyze only via mock test. So according to the rating, you can buy a few mock tests. Personally, I went to Udemy and 
uh, you should ensure uh, that you know the, the ratings are good so there are two types of courses over there one is like you only have mock test another is like a quick revision plus mock test since i was new to power bi so i decided to go with the uh, you know revision plus mock test right like eight hour course over there you can see there are a lot of eight nine hours course over there so i picked one and in that course you will have at least two mock tests as well you know ensure that this is one way or if you are a little more confident then you just purchase the mock test directly and after you get the result of your mock test you'll get to know that you know where you are <laughs> definitely once you have covered your microsoft learning path you need to assess yourself for sure for that mock test is the only way so I, since i didn't have much experience with power bi so i took course so that can i can revise plus mock test so if you already have experience with power bi you you can directly go with the mock test as well so it, it depends upon on your experience but then uh, the main aim is to see your marks for example you, you got maybe 60 percent the passing mark is 70 like 700 you are getting 600 or six or 650 so that is not good enough but then what you have to do is with respect to the result of the mock test see which section is working for you and which section is not working for you for example for me deploy and maintain asset I had some problems with with this one in the result of your mock test they will show you that you are scoring that much from this section that will really help you so next time when you revise you have to concentrate more for example for me deploy and maintain assets so i would suggest you you know the more you will solve the questions it will be better for you also create the same environment be in the room no one no one should be there and properly give the exam the mock test try to replicate the same environment remember if you're consistently uh, scoring bad you need to revise more you need more mock tests as well so take a call according to your performance okay let's now move on to the day of certification what should be your approach what were the new things that i discovered which i did not know earlier i will tell you all the first thing was that there were 55 questions and i was under the impression that you will always get more than more than or equal to say 60 questions right because wherever i asked whoever i asked everyone was like 60 questions but then it was 55 questions and so for me it was like 55 questions and 100 minutes so not 60 or 120 minutes which i which i heard from many of uh, certified analysts right so it can be 55 and uh, total duration was 100 minutes so ensure that you have seen that it will be at the top uh, right and left i don't remember but it will be there at the top so ensure that you know what is the overall time limit for you don't see the number of questions but the time duration as well it will be quite clear over there second thing is that if you are giving this uh, descent uh, some of the advantages that i can share with you is that you can get a break over there I mean, like you can pause and you can go out i don't think that will help you avoid that but yes there is a possibility over there another thing is that they provide you some paper and pen as well which helped me in a way because uh, there was a question related to data modeling where you have one to many relationship right from one table to the another so i had to go from one table to the another table there were three tables over there so that helped me to you know to ensure that the direction is correct or not or whether we have to do by direction or not so i did utilize that pen and paper and again i don't think this will be allowed if you are doing giving this from your home third thing is that if your network is not stable i'm talking about your home then it's always makes sense to go to the center itself next thing is that there is an option for you to flag your question so don't waste your question your time on a particular question if you think that you're not able to crack that for now just flag that and move over to the next question and maybe you will able to crack that later it helps actually right it it's all i won't say all about but it's about confidence as well so once you have uh, cracked three or four questions on a trot then you are more confident and if you come back again you will be able to solve it it happens actually questions will be like uh, there, there are two different categories uh, there, there are two sections in one section it can be single choice multiple choice drag and drop uh, types of questions over there second one is the use cases right there where they will describe a scenario and on the basis of that description you can have seven to eight questions probably you will have around 20 percent of questions like that but trust me you know 
people get very afraid of those questions but trust me these are like just any other question the only thing is that the description is little lengthy and in order to counter that i would suggest you not to read too much right uh, the scenario is there that's fine read the scenario and after that trick will be there will be big you know tables over there three tables are there all the columns are there column description primary key key everything you need not to read all those stuff over there right just read the scenario okay tables are there okay just look have a look at that table and at the end you will have a question for me the strategy was to read the question first read it quickly don't waste too much of time over there read it and after that from question again you again anyways you'll have to go back to the scenario once you read the question I'll read it quickly. I'll not waste my time to read those all the tables, columns, keys, and all. No, I don't want that. And at the bottom, there will be a question. Then you go back to your scenario. Suppose there is a question where you have uh, one table called product table, pack table, say sales table, and you have another table called region table. You say that okay, this is a retail store. You have sales transaction. You have region table. You have different product for which you need to filter the sales. also you need to ensure that the sales manager should be able to see the sales transaction for his region or his or her region only so there will be different questions based on the same scenario it can cover different topics like it can cover security it can cover dax expression it can cover deploy and maintenance section as well another important point that you should remember is that once you have answered a scenario based question you cannot revert So other the other category questions you can flag, but you cannot flag the use case uh, questions over there. Once you have answered and you have moved to the next page, you cannot come back and rectify that or say change that. So before moving to the next page, ensure that your answer is best to the means you have to pick the best possible answer over there. And trust me, it's not that tough. In fact, I think I enjoyed use cases more than the other sort of questions over there. So just be cool, be calm. and as i said that don't waste in uh, reading the unnecessary stuff for example the table all the column fields uh, product keys and all go to your question and come back to the scenario again first you read the scenario quickly and after that read the question and you can you, you can go back you know whatever fields there that they are talking about in those question then you can concentrate on those fields with respect to the table diagram that you are having over there that that worked for me So I hope this session was helpful for you and your preparation is going in the right direction. So at the end, I would really say all the best to all of you with your preparation, and I'm looking forward to your batch or certificate as well. So this is Ritesh signing off from Dancing with Data, because data hi data hai kya tumko sab kuch aata hai. Bye bye and all the best.